Build video. I've been itching to make another cool build for a long time, and I think I finally figured out what it's gonna be. Some of you may not know that I'm a man of many shirts, even though my videos may lead you to believe otherwise. I'm also a man of procrastination when it comes to some things, and one of those things being laundry. I hate you. This sets up the monumental task of me having to fold all of my clothes. While doing that the other day, I remembered one of those paid programming TV ads where it showed a shirt folder. It was just four pieces of flat plastic that were hinged together, and when you folded them in a certain way, it folded your t-shirts. I'm sure everyone's seen it, it's been around forever. I want to make one of those, but electric. So I put the t-shirt on it, press a button, and it folds my clothes. It shouldn't be that difficult, it's fine. Since this video is going to be involving electronic components, there's going to be a bit of coding. Now don't freak out. It doesn't have to be difficult. Yeah, it doesn't have to be difficult. You just think of what you want to happen. It's folding all that laundry enough to make you scream. Hi. Ah! And then you learn how to do it. Don't ever create a project based on what your skill set already is. Create a project in your mind and then learn those skills to get the project done. For instance, what do I want to happen? I want to press a button and then have this thing fold itself. I already got a general idea of what I want to be going on physically in SolidWorks. Now I'm just going to create the code to make that happen. First thing I want to happen is the action of me pushing the button. So write down push button. Okay, pushing the button starts the process. What's after that? Well, I want the first motor to turn 180 and then back. Write that down. When that motor's done, I want the second motor to do the same thing. I want to do the same thing for all three motors, and then at the end of the code, I want it to be looking for another button press. So loop back to the start of the code. And boom, that's it. That's our code. Super easy. Now we just need to convert it into a language that the computer can understand. Once we get the structure, once we get the bones in place, then we can go into the little logistics of how long the motor needs to turn to get to 180 degrees and then 180 degrees back. I already did some simple conversions on that. These are 100 revolutions per minute motors. That means that it takes 0.6 seconds per revolution, and I need the motor to go half of a revolution this way, and then half of a revolution back, so one half of 0.6 seconds is 0.3 seconds, or 300 milliseconds. There's for sure going to be some little fine adjustments I'm going to have to make on those numbers. The motors might have a little bit of slack, but we can figure that out later. The code is done, which is how we communicate from human language to computer language with our Arduino. The Arduino is just a simple microcontroller which accepts and gives inputs and outputs. So far, we've told the Arduino to turn separate motors at different times in different directions. What about power? Yes. Power. Mm, power is voltage times current. To think about it, it's like pressure and flow. I have the Arduino running off of 5 volts. So 5 volts of pressure, if that makes any sense. The motors that I have run off of 12 volts, or 12 pressure. They also draw a good amount of current, thus requiring more power than the Arduino can supply. Which is where these little driver boards come in. The MD10CR3 controller boards. These have their own set of inputs and outputs. You can think about it like an Arduino that's already pre-programmed. You give that board its own power supply, give it a direction and stop or go signal via the Arduino, and it can control the motors. And that's about it. Oh, I also have a little push button. That's the, yeah, push, it's a... It's a button. Okay, that's all the electronics hardware that I needed for this project. Now let's get into what I had to design and 3D print. So this is the device that I was talking about earlier. It has the four separate pieces. All of them can fold onto each other. And when you put a t-shirt on it, it ends up making a perfect folded t-shirt. But how are we gonna get things to fold automatically? Let me just drop in all of my motors. Boom, look at that. This is what I've got so far. Here are my little fancy motors with their own drive shafts. Look at that, that's pretty impressive. The yellow pieces are gonna be 3D printed. That's uh, what's attaching to the motor. And I'm assuming can clamp around this. I don't know, I'm probably gonna make it out of cardboard. And it's going to turn here and go like that. Pretty neat. The motors jiggle around a little bit just because this is, it's not real life. There's no give or play in any of the pieces. Now what I need to hold the motors down, uh, I came up with these little things. It's just gonna be something to screw down to a platform, which is where these little holes are. And then I made this slot just big enough for a zip tie to go through. Goes right over, oh no, everything is freaking out. There we go. So we can see there's just a little bit of room, and then when you squeeze the top with a zip tie, it should clamp around the motor just fine, I hope. So this end is gonna look something like this. It's a prototype, I don't know what- The thing I have yet to figure out is how I'm gonna get the last leg to flip over. This one. But I'm sure something will come up. Up next is to save these yellow pieces as STLs and send them to my 3D printer and wait probably 12 hours. 17 hours? Just kidding, I already printed them. I'm not an amateur, geez.
Okay, first test with both motors. Well, that didn't work. Test number two, both motors. A All right, another day. This is where I'm at so far. I've got those two working just fine. Uh, trying to figure out how to get the middle going. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do is just put this here like this, make that a hinge along here, and then have a rod operate this one. Since the motor won't fit under here, the motor can just stick off to the side here. I just made a simple coupling. It attaches to a wooden dowel that I can cut down to size. Hopefully that'll be enough to turn that and not be too floppy. Hold on for just one second before we get into the tests. I have to say that this machine isn't perfect. It still requires a little bit of input. Obviously, I have to lay out the shirt a certain way on the machine, as well as do a last fold and pick it up off of the machine. I was thinking of doing an extra fold with another motor, but that would have taken another couple weeks and laundry got to get done. After I show you the tests, I'll do a head-to-head -head with a few t-shirts and see which one is faster, me folding it my own way or using the machine. I'll time both and see which one comes out on top. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, gentlemen, here's the test. See if this thing works. I cleaned it up quite a bit, uh, organized the controller boards. Now let's just see how it goes. Boom. Ah! <laughs> so it works without anything on it. Now I just need to run through some tests of different types of shirts. Here's casual thin shirts. Thicker work shirt. Yeah, it works. Workout shirt. Easy. A pair of socks. Perfect. Sandwich. A hot pocket. Long sleeve. Yeah. Okay, I've got 15 shirts. I'm gonna fold them first using the old method. You gotta be honest, this hurts a little bit to do. I just folded these. Ready, set, go. I think another thing I need to think about in this is consistency. Because I'm kind of trying to go fast on folding these right now and the consistency of my fold is not particularly good. Fifteen. Stop. Uh, so it's 3.38. Three minutes and 38 seconds is my time to beat. I just folded just these. Folded That's about how they come out of the dryer. <laughs> Still got some breadcrumbs on it. Okay, and start. It was close. It was close. There's there's a learning curve. Let me Time. Woo! 215 versus 238. I call that a win. Machine win. I feel like that time when John Henry. Never mind. And that's it. That's the end of my little video. Thank you for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed it. I tried to do a little bit more editing and fun stuff in this one. Um, can you stop that? Anyways, let me know what y'all think. If you want any of the files, I'll be uploading them hopefully shortly. And with all that, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. <laughs>